गुड इवनिंग श्री मोहम्मद हामिद अंसारी वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया श्री राहुल गांधी वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑल इंडिया कांग्रेस कमिटी श्री आनंद शर्मा एडिटर ऑफ द बुक सीनियर कांग्रेस लीडर श्री शानु कपिला डायरेक्टर एकेडमिक फाउंडेशन डिस्टिंग्विस्ड गेस्ट लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट्स ए ग्रेट प्लेजर फॉर मी टू रिसीव द फर्स्ट कॉपी ऑफ द सेंटीनियल वॉल्यूम ऑन मिसेस इंदिरा गांधी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट रिमार्केबल पर्सनैलिटीज of the 20th century Indira Gandhi's entire life was infused with a tremendous passion for India and its people and deep rooted commitment to our core values She was filled with an intense desire to see India rise above poverty and deprivation as well as occupy a rightful place in the committee of the nations her life was a saga of courage and conviction fearlessness in action boldness in decision were the hallmarks of mrs indira gandhi Indira ji waged throughout her life a relentless war against communal and sectarian forces. She strove to successfully transcend diverse identities of caste, community, religion, and creed, and in the process established a direct connect. with people throughout the length and breadth of the country it was this unhindered effort that made her acceptable from kashmir to kanyakumari mizoram to dwarka with only one identity indian not any other identity The Centennial Volume contains a large number of writings on various aspects of Indira Gandhi's life, personality, by many. I have also narrated a small piece, my views, though I had the privilege of elaborating in detail. on the beginning of the centenary year 19th november last year indira ji assumed office as dr monmohan singh very correctly pointed out when india was in the face of an acute economic and financial crisis fourth five year plan could not be financed public sector outlay could not be worked out in time because of the lack of resources two consecutive droughts in 1965 and 1966 made the food situation worse and almost truly it was a situation from sheep to mouth the varying conditions of the food loan of us public law 480 and other donor countries created the situation which was not at all conducive for any self respecting nation she took up the challenges with her characteristic tenacity and brought to an end india's dependence 
on food suppliers. Within the tenure of her prime ministership, and when she demitted office on 22nd March 1977, India's food production has reached more than 127 million tons from 50 million tons, and India was near self-sufficient in food production. And after that, there was no need of major food import, except some critical supply necessi necessitated occasionally. And thanks to the policy, hard work of the farmers, our agricultural scientists, this year we are going to produce more than 273.7 million tons of food grains. In the energy results and abilities, were on full display in 1971. Indiraji combined bold and quick decision making with careful planning, adequate preparedness, single-minded focus to provide a helping hand to 700 million people of Diden East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, to achieve their right of self-determination. She established herself as a leader with nerves of steel and scripted a unique chapter in contemporary India's and world history. The foreign policy, Indiraji was a champion of new international economic order, maintained vigorous opposition to apartheid and opposed discrimination of any kind anywhere in the world. She gave a new impetus to the non-aligned <coughs> movement after the seventh non-aligned summit. During Indiraji's tenure as prime minister, India made rapid progress in several fields, agriculture, industry, science, technology, and social services. She had the determination to carry on the objective which she believed is necessary for the development and welfare of the country. I can draw the attention of this distinguished audience to a single fact. It is known to everybody. By a fraction of vote, the abolition of the PP Parts Bill, rather relating Constitution Amendment Bill, was defeated in Raj Sabha. It obtained majority support, but not two-thirds of the members present and voting in support of the bill. It happened around 5.36 in the evening. The government of India worked whole night. Bill was defeated. But it was found out by the constitutional experts that the privileges obtained by the individual rulers, each one of them, are arising out of a contract made by the Diden ruler with the government of India after the formation of India after 1947 partition. And you imagine more than 500 princely rulers contacts were terminated and orders for each termination of such contract were issued by president, the then president, from Rashtrapati Bhavan, Rashtrapati Nilayam, at Hyderabad House, where he was staying at that particular point of time. Of course, later on it was 
nullified again by the Supreme Court. That's another issue. But the short point which I'm trying to drive at, that she left no stone unturned. To achieve the objective which she had in her mind for the necessity of the country and the situation. Congress was defeated in 1977. I remember. I was a junior colleague of her, being the Minister of State in the in charge of revenue and banking. When I met her, she told me the first sentence, and perhaps the one most important sentence, Pranav, don't get unnerved by defeat. This is the time to act. And she acted. Because of the political differences of opinion within the party, I'm not going to comment on it. A short, another split took place within a short span of time. After 1969, it was in 1978, January. I remember, as I was a small actor in that part of the activities, on 2nd January 1978, she was elected Congress President. And by 20th of January, she completed the formation of the Working Committee Central Parliamentary Board appointed the ad hoc committees of the PCCs and prepared the party to face general election to the state assemblies of Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Assam, Urunachal, and of course, it was then Nefa, not Urunachal. Urunachal became later as a state in 1980, after 85. I'm talking of 78. And one, decisively, with two third majority, Andhra and Karnataka, and emerged as the single largest party in Maharashtra, and along with the other Congress, formed the government. Difference between 2nd January and 6th March. One can understand how quickly she had to take decisions and how decisively and determinately she took those decisions. I think this is the characteristic of Indira Gandhi. In the centenary year, people will remember for her various contributions perhaps the largest number of literatures from all over the world have come out on her life, her sacrifice, her death. I remember still I cannot forget it. I have said it, shared it with many friends on many occasions. As a student of history, I was mortally afraid to do anything with Golden Temple. And as member of the then CCP, I could not avoid my responsibility of co-sharing the decisions. But in meeting itself, I told, but as the most dangerous decision we are taking, always it comes to my mind, the plight of Ahmed Sabdari, when after the third battle of Panipat, see, he did something wrong with Golden Temple and what plight he had to face. It's not that she did not know it. She knew it very well. And she told, sometimes history demands some action which may not prove correct later on, 
but perhaps most relevant at that time. This decision cannot be avoided. I have no intention of festering the wound. All of us are fully aware of. But the short point which I am trying to drive at, the fearlessness in her action, and on the report of various intelligences, pouring on from, look at the differences of the time for a few months, but she did not make an inch change in the policy which she had. Indraji had the second largest innings as Prime Minister of this country. In first instance, from January 1966 to 22nd March 1977, 11 years and two months, and again, from 19, 15th January 1980 to 31st October 1984, four years and eight months. And what legacy is he left? During these almost 16 years prime ministership of India, during her te tenure, India became the third largest reservoir of technically and scientifically trained and competent manpower. The fifth military power, the sixth member of the nuclear club, and began the race for space in space science and technology, period in political wilderness, Remember how active and how determined she was to have the objective. One of her bitterest critics has written, given a vivid description of her Belchi visit. Everybody gave up hope, said it is impossible. Her response was, if we are to walk whole night, I am ready for that. She did it. And she proved that what she decides to do, she does not hesitate to have that. I am glad. And thanks to Sri Anand Sarma and his colleagues, for bringing out this beautiful volume in connection with the centenary year of Srimati Indira Gandhi. As I started my observations at the beginning, one of the remarkable personalities of the 20th century all over the world, and to the people of India, even today, after her passing away in 1984, 31st October. She is the most acceptable ruler, prime minister of a democratic country, even today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Joy.